captives that you see, to wit, these that are standing stand. They do not sit. Now you're my witness, tis true that I tell. The old man Hegio that within doth dwell is this one's sire. But first, if you behave, I'll tell you why he is his father's slave. Old man Hegio had two sons, one four years old, a slave made off with and in eldest sold unto the father of this man in chains. Now, have you this well holden in your brains? <laughs> By Jove! That man says no right over there. Move up, there's room to watch, no, no seats be rare. Oh, must actors fall like beggars for your sake and scream their lungs out? I won't. Don't mistake. <laughs> you that pay taxes and could take front row, he what remains, and not to you all owe. The slave that ran away, as I have told, his master's son to this man's father sold, who made the little slave his son's own page, since that the twain were nearly one in age. Now, Boma then is he, a captive though, sold to his father whom he doesn't know. Oh, what footballs make the gods of everyone! Thus, have you heard how Hecchio lost one son? When the Aetolians after rose in arms, against those of Elis, as in war's alarms oft happens, then the other son was caught, and by Menarchus the physician bought in Elis. Hecchio, his son to free, in mean exchange of one of high degree, straightway an alien captive gins to train, hoping, if luck so wills, his case to aid. But not knowing underneath his roof this one is verily his own long stolen son. But hearing how an alien knight was late, taken prisoner of highest rank and state, no time doth waste but adds unto his slaves, and saves no gold but his son it saves. Oh, and homesick for the youth without to do, buy from the freighter spoiled, these very two. Ah, but they between them have contrived a plan which frees master, aided by his man. They change their names and garments mutually. He calls himself Philocrates. While he pretends he's Tyndarus, and for the day each has agreed the other's part to play. This slave shall act today right cleverly, and by the trick his own good master free. His brother too will he by this day plan return to father and to fatherland, but all unknowing, just as often you perform more good than you intend to do. <laughs> so these, not knowing by their knavish plan, their clever scheme to cozen in Japan by mother wit, so manage and devise that he at home in agic bondage lies his father's slave, nor once the truth suspects. <gasps> what weakling we men be if one reflects. This is the plot we carry on today. For us, grim fact. For you, mere actors play. <laughs> One other thing I would suggest. It will pay indeed to listen with some zest to this our play. You'll find it new, I'm sure. There's not a line therein you deem impure. No perjured painter here, no shameless Jane, no blustering men at arms. Uh, I'm not afraid that I spoke just now of bloody strife. Twixt Albion Lord and brave Atolian's right. We do our fighting behind the scenes. Moreover, tragedy is beyond our means since we're comedians. <laughs> Uh, if any now spoils for a fight, let him begin the row. If against better man he's found to be, or whatever is it, I can hardly care to see. <laughs> I'll treat him to such a dose of fight, he'd hardly care to see one from tonight. <laughs> well, I go, most upright judges. Au revoir. Lions in peace, and heroes eke in war. <laughs> Then his grace, 
there or not. Of course she is. But, <clears throat> more of course, we uh, parasites are there, though no one ever asks or summons us. <clears throat> uh, like mice, we um, live on other people's food. Uh, in holidays, when, when folks go out of town, our teeth enjoy a holiday as well. As uh, when, it's, when it's dry, snails lie in their shells, and I can do live on their native juices. So parasites lie hidden in Israel. All through the holidays, living on their juices while so they feed on jaunted in the country. Now that 
your son is in the foeman's hands, I realize how much he was to me. Oh, if a stranger can feel his loss so much, what must I feel? He was my only joy. A stranger? I, a stranger? <laughs> Hegio, never say that nor cherish such a thought. Your only joy he was, but oh, to me, far dearer than a thousand only joys. You're, you're right to make your friends discuss your own, but come, uh, cheer up. Uh, alas, it, 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 it pains me here oh, that, uh, that now the feaster's army is discharged. And can't you meantime find another general to call to arms this army that's been discharged? No fear, since Philopolemus was taken who, who filled that post. They all refuse to act. It's no wonder they refuse to act. Oh, 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 what a splendid general you would make, and though now you're serving as a private, merely. Be of good cheer. In a few days' time, I trust I shall receive my dear son home again. I've got a youthful alien prisoner whom I'm hoping to exchange for him, one of highest rank and greatest wealth. Ah! Oh, thank heaven, gracias! Hmm. Where have you been invited to, uh, Dying today. Why, uh, <clears throat> nowhere that I know of. Why do you ask? Because it is my birthday, and so I pray come and dine with me. Well, Sylvie! <laughs> that is, if you're content with frugal fare. Oh, well, well as, as long as it's not too frugal. I get to know that, you know, at home. Well, name your figure. Done. My dear. <laughs> Oh, well, unless, of course, I get better off. <laughs> On which conditions as better suit my partners and myself. As I am telling you my whole estate, it's only fair that I should make my appearance. I fear this estate you're selling me has got a bottomless abyss within it. But if you come, come early. Uh, now, if you like. The path my guests must tread is full of stone. You won't dissuade me, Hegio. Don't think it. I'll get my teeth well shod before I come. My table's really coarse. <laughs> Do you eat brambles? My dinner's from the soil. Yeah, so is good pork. Plenty of cabbage. Oh, God. <laughs> Food for invalids. Uh, what more? Be very tired. I'll not forget. Now I'll run in and look at my accounts to see what I have lying at my bankers. And then I'll to my brothers, as I said just now. Since heaven has willed it should be so, that you must drink this cup of woe. Why, bear it with a patient mind, and so your pain will lie apart. At home I didn't say you were free. Now your lot is slavery. Oh, but just take it as a thing, of course, instead of making matters worse. Behave yourselves and don't be queasy about your lot, man. It's easy. Uh, no need for howls and cries. Uh, I see your sorrow in your eyes. Be brave, in your besties. But we're ashamed to wear these chains. My lord, you suffer far worse than me. Should he leave you to range at large out of his custody? Or set you at liberty from whom he bought yesterday? Oh, he needn't fear to lose his gains. Should he release us, we know it's our duty, sir. Oh, yes. You'll run up! I know that. Your beauty, sir. Oh! <laughs> run off! Run off where? <laughs> to the land of your birth. Nay, truly, it never would answer to imitate runaway slaves. Well, by Jove, I'd advise you to get a chance, sir. One thing I beg of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's your position, sir? Give us a chance of exchanging a word where there's no fear that we'll be overheard. Run <laughs> it! Go! Leave them alone. We'll take our positions there. Make sure that your talk doesn't last too long. Uh, oh, that's my intention. <laughs> Somehow come along. Come away farther. As far as we can from them. We must contrive to conceal our fine plan from them. Never disclose any trace of our trickery. Else we shall find all our dodges a mockery. 
For once I get wind of it, there'll be an end of it. For you are my master, brave, and I pretend to be your slave, that we must watch with greatest care. Of eavesdroppers we must beware, with caution and skill. Keep your senses all waking. There's no time for sleep. It's a big undertaking. <gasps> so I'm to be master? Oh, yes, that is the notion. And so for your head, I would pray you remark it, you want me to take my own head to market. I know. Oh, only you gave your wish, remember my devotion. This is how you'll find most men treating you. Until they have the boom they crave, they're as kind as can be. But success makes the name. When they've got it, then they set about cheating you. Now I have told you the treatment you owe to me. You I regard as a brother, you know to me. Nay. Let us say no convention shall hinder us. Next to my own, you are my brother, dear Tinderus. Wow. Now, I warn you always to remember this. I no longer am your master, but your slave. Don't be remiss. Since kind heaven has shown us plainly that the way ourselves to save is for me, who was your master, not to turn into your slave. Where before I gave you orders, now I beg of you in prayers. By the changes in our fortune, by my father's kindly care, by the common fetters fastened on us by the enemy, think of who you were and are, and pay no more respect to me than I used to pay to you when you were slave and I was free. Well, I know that I am you when you are me. Yes, stick to that. Then I hope that by your shrewdness we shall gain what we are at. I'll be back again directly when I looked into the case. Where are those whom I directed at the door to take their place? Oh, by bollocks. You've been careful that we shouldn't be to seek. Thus by bonds and guards surrounded, we have had no chance to sneak. However careful, one cannot be careful as he ought. When he thinks he's been most careful, oft the careful man is caught. Don't you think I've just cause to keep a careful watch on you when I've had to pay so large a sum of money for the two? Truly we've no right to blame you that you watch and guard us thus. But if we should get a chance and run away, you can't blame us. Just like you, my son is held in slavery by your countrymen. Was he taken prisoner? Yes. We weren't the only cowards then. Come aside, you. And there's something I would ask of you alone, and I hope you'll not deceive me. Everything I know, I'll own. If in aught I'm ignorant, I'll tell you so upon my life. Oh, now the old man's at the barber's. See, my master wets his knife. Why, he hasn't even put an apron on to shield his clothes. Will he shave him close or only cut his hair? Oh, goodness knows. But if he has any sense, he'll crop the old man properly. Come, tell me, would you rather be a slave or get set free? Well, what I want is that which brings me most of good and least of ill. Though I must confess, my slavery wasn't very terrible. Little difference was made between me and my master's son. <laughs> bravo! Bravo, you were set for theirs of illusion. For compared with this man's cunning, he is but a trifling knave. Mark how cleverly he talks as if he'd always been a slave. Tell me, to what family does Philocrates belong? Oh, the Goldings. That's a family both wealthy in honors and in holdings. Is your master there respected? Highly by our foremost men. Oh, if his influence is as great as you maintain, are his uh, riches fat? I guess so. Fat is suing, uh, one <laughs> might say. Is his father living? Well, sir, he was when we came away. Whether he still lives or not, we'll have to go to hell to see. Uh, Saved again! For now he adds to his lies philosophy! <laughs> What's his name, I pray? Then sorrow so conacrisite. <laughs> I suppose the sort of nickname given to show how rich he is? Oh, nay, by bollocks. It was given him for his avarice and greed. Truth to tell you, Theodoro Medes is his name indeed. What is this? Is his father grasping? Grasping up, most covetous. Just to show you, when he sacrifices to his genius, all the vessels he uses are of Samian crockery, lest a genius should steal them. That's his character, you see. Stay right here, then. Now I'll ask the other what I want to know. Now, Philocrates, <laughs> your slave has told me everything, for from him I have learned your birth, the whole he has confessed to me. Now, if you'll confess the same thing, it shall to your advantage be, for your slave has told me all. Oh, it was his duty so to do. All is true that he's confessed. Although I must admit to you, it was my wish to hide from you my birth and wealth and family. But now, Hegio, that I've lost my fatherland and liberty, naturally he should stand in awe of you much more than me. 
since by force of arms our fortunes stand on an equality. I remember when he durst not speak a word to do me ill. He may strike me now, for fortune plays with mortals as she will. I, once free, am made a slave, brought from high to low degree. And instead of giving orders, must obey submissively. But if I should have a master, such as I was when at home, and have no fear that his commands would prove unjust or burdensome. But Hegio, will you bear from me a word of warning? Yes, say all. Once I was as free and as happy as your beloved son. But the force of hostile arms has robbed him of his freedom too. He's a slave amongst our people, just as I am here with you. Certainly there is a God who watches us where'er we be. He will treat your son exactly as he finds you treat me. Virtue, sure, will be rewarded. Vice will e'er bring sorrow on. As a father misses me as much as you, your absent son. Yes, I know. Do you admit, then, what your slave confessed to me? I admit that my father is a man of property and that I am of noble birth. But I beseech you, Hegio, do not let my ample riches cause your avarice to grow. Lest my father think it better, though I am his only son, that I should continue serving you and keep your livery on, rather than return home a beggar to my infinite disgrace. Thanks to heaven and to my forefathers that I've been wealthy all my days. Nor is wealth, in my opinion, always useful to obtain. Many a man I've known degraded to a beast by too much gain. There are times when loss is better far than gain in every way. Gold? I hate it. Oh, how many people has it led astray? Now, attend to me, and I my purpose plainly will declare. There in Ellis with your people is my son a prisoner. If you bring him back to me, you shall not pay a single cent. I'll release you and the other two. Otherwise, I'll not relent. Oh, that's the noblest kindness offer. All the world can't find your mate. But tell me, is he in slavery to a private man or to the state? To monarchs, a position. Oh, my client. All is plain. Everything will be as easy as the falling of the rain. Uh, bring him back to me as soon as may be. Certainly, but heavy. What's your wish? For all to aught in reason. Uh, listen, you shall know. I don't wish that I be sent back until your son has come. Name the price you'll take for yonder slave, that I may send him home and he may redeem your son. Nay, someone else I should prefer. Whom I'll send the truce is made to go and meet your father there. He can take your father any message that you want. It's might. no use to send a stranger. All your toil and smoke will end. Send my slave, but he'll do the job just as soon as he gets there. Or you'll not find anybody who's trustier or more faithful. He's a man who does his work with all his heart. Boldly trust your son to him, and he will truly play his part. Don't you fear. At my own peril, I make trial of his truth. For he knows my kindness to him. I can safely trust the you. Well, I'll send him at your risk, if you consent. Oh, I agree. Well, let him start as soon as may be. But that will suit me perfectly. <laughs> well, if he doesn't come back, you'll pay me 50 pounds. Mm. Are you willing? Certainly. They go and loose him from his bonds and the other two. Oh, may heaven ever treat you so graciously, since you've shown me so much kindness and from fetters set me free. Oh, yes, I'm much more comfortable now that I've cast that iron rust. <laughs> Gifts when given to good people win them gratitude enough. Now, if you're going to send them, teach him, tell him what to say when he gets home to your father there. Shall I call it? Do so, pray. Heaven's blessings brought it to my son and me. And you as well. I, your new lord, desire that you give your true and faithful service to your old master. I have lent you to him and set a price of fifty pounds on you. He says he wants to send you to his father that he may make ransom of my son and make an interchange between us of our sons. I'm ready to serve one or the other. I'm like a wheel. Just twist me as you please. I'll upturn it this way or that as you command. I'll see that you not lose by your compliance, that you've acted as a good slave should do. Come now. Now, here's your man. I thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity of sending him to my father to give him word about my welfare and my purposes. All which I'll tell my father as I bid him. Now, Tindarus, we've come to an agreement. 
that you should go home to Ellis to see my father, and should you not come back, I undertake it to pay the sum of 50 pounds for you. <laughs> A fair agreement, ah. or if your father looks for me or some other messenger to come from thence to him. Uh, then pray attend, and I'll tell you what to tell my father. I have always tried to serve you hitherto, Philocrates, as you wished me to the utmost of my poor ability, uh. that I'll ever seek and aim at with heart and soul and strength. Always. Oh, that's right. You know your duty. Listen now to what I say. First of all, convey a greeting to my parents dear from me, and to other relatives and friends, if any you should see. Say I'm well, and held in bondage by this worthy gentleman, who has shown and ever shows me all the honor that he can. You needn't tell me that. It's rooted in my memory. <laughs> if I didn't see my keeper, I should think I was free. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, tell them of the bargain I've made with Hegio for the ransom of his son. You need to tell me that I know. <laughs> they must purchase and restore him, and we both shall be set free. Good. A bit and be quick for your sick and for mine, in like degree. You don't want to see your son more ardently than he does no. Why, each loves his own. Well, have you any other messages? Yes. <laughs> don't hesitate to say I'm well and happy. Tindarus, and that no shade of disagreement ever separated us, that you've never once deceived me nor opposed your master's will, and that you've stuck to me like wax in spite of all this flood of ill. By my side you stood and helped me through my sore adversities, true and faithful to me ever. When my father hears of this, Tindarus, and knows your noble conduct toward himself and me, he will never be so mean as to refuse to set me free. When I'm back, I'll spare no effort that it may be brought about. To your toil and skill and courage and wisdom, there's no doubt that I owe my coming home to my father again. For it was you who confessed my birth and wealth to this best of men. So it was you who freed your master by your ready wit. Yes, I did, sir, as you say. I'm glad you remember it. Uh, but indeed, you've well deserved it at my hands, Philocrates. For if I should utter your many, many kindnesses, <laughs> night would fall before I finished. You have done as much for me as if you had been my slave. <laughs> Good heavens, the vanity shines in their dispositions. Oh, I can re scarce refrain from tears to see their true affection. And the way the slave appears and commends his master. Oh, truly he has not commended me even a hundredth part that he himself deserves to be. Well, since you've behaved so nobly, now you have a splendid chance here to crown your services with doubly faithful vigilance. As I wish the thing accomplished, I shall do all I know, and she will show you of it. I call Joe to witness, Hegio, that I never will betray Philocrates. I'll take my oath. Honest fellow! From these loving protestations, mind you never, never swerve. And if I've said less about your good deeds than they deserve, pray you don't be angry with me on account of what I've said. But remember, you are going with a price upon your head, and that my life and honor I've staked on your return. So when you leave this place, I pray you don't forget what you have sworn. But when you leave me here in slavery instead of you, think that you are free and neglect what you have pledged to do, or your solemn promise to redeem this good man's son, Fifty pounds, remember, is the price we've agreed upon. Faithful to your faithful master, do not let your faith be bought. I am sure my father will do everything he ought. Keep me as your friend forever, and this good man as well. Take my hand in yours, and swear an oath unbreakable, that you will be as faithful to me as I ever was to you. Mind, you are now my master, my protector, and my brother too. I commit to you my hopes and happiness. That'll do. Now, are you satisfied if I can carry this commission through? Yes. Then I will return in a manner that shall please you both. Is that all, sir? Come back quickly. So I will upon my throne. Come along to my bankers, and I'll provide you for the way. Also, I will get you a passport from the praetors. Passport? Uh, yes, to get him through the army so that they will let him go. Come away. A pleasant journey. Very well. By bollocks, what a blessing that I bought these men from the commissioners. So please, heaven, I've saved my son from bondage to these foreigners. Dear, 
how long I hesitated whether I should buy or not. Uh, please do take him in, good slaves, and do not let him leave the spot when there is no keeper with him. I shall soon be home again. Now I'll run down to my brothers to inspect my other men. I'll inquire if any of them is acquainted with this youth. Oh. Oh, come along, and I'll dispatch you. That must be done first in sooth. Yeah, yeah. I told him I bought him. 
He said he might see him, and so I have brought him. <laughs> I bade them loose him from his chains and came away. <laughs> uh, pray follow me. Your earnest suit success obtains. Your dear old friend you shall soon see. Liberty. 
What? What's that, Jailbird? Do, do, do you tell me you were Freeman born? <laughs> no, no, no. Philocrates, not Freeman is my name. Pray, mark your scorn, Hegel. I tell you, you are being mocked and swindled by this name. Why, he never had a slave except himself. For he's a slave. Oh, because you are poor and have no means of livelihood, you wish everyone to be like you. I know your mood. All <laughs> poor men like you are spiteful. <laughs> Envy those who are better off. Hey, you! Know, don't believe this fellow, for he's doing naught but scoff. Sure, I am. He'll play some uh, scurvy trick on you before he's done. I don't like this tale of his about the ransom of your son. You don't like me? I dare say. I'll accomplish it, you see. I'll restore him to his father. He in turn releases me. That's why I sent Tindarus back to see his father. Come, Natalie. You are Tindarus, the only slave who bears that name. Oh! Goodness knows by the dodges of the scoundrel who leads me by the nose. 
Uh, are you sure there is no mistake, though? Yes, I speak of what I know. Is it certain? Certain? Nothing could be more entirely so. Why, I knew Philocrates when he was a boy. But where is he now? Ah, that's what vexes me and gives him joy. Tell me, to what, what sort of looking man is this Philocrates? Uh, round in the face, uh, sharpish nose, dark complexion, cold black eyes, um, uh, blackish, quite straight hair. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's the fellow to a T. Oh, curse upon it. Everything has gone wrong today with me. Well, look at those wretched rods that on my back today must die. So I see I've been cheated. Come on, fetters, don't be shy. <laughs> Come and run and clasp my leg. I'll take care of you. <laughs> well, I've been sufficiently bamboozled by these villains here. The other said he was a slave, while this pretended to be free. So I've gone and lost the colonel, and the husk is left to me. Yes, they've caught me by the nose most finely. Don't I make a foolish show? But this fellow here won't mock me. Colonel Corax, Cordelio, come out here and bring your ropes. You tie your big lads, here's a door. Come, bind your heaviest, thickest chains on this wretch. What? Why? What? What's the matter? What's my crime? Your crime? You've sown and scattered ill. And now you shall reap it. <laughs> I think you'd better say I harrowed too, for farmers often harrow than so. <laughs> oh, how boldly does he flout me to my face! A harmless, guiltless man, although it's the oh, slave should hardly face his master of all. Tie things. up his hands as tightly as you can. Oh, oh, but but why? You'll have to cut them off, for I am yours. Why are you so angry? Because my plans, as far as in you lay by your price villainous and lying tricks you've torn asunder, mangled limb from limb and ruined my hopes and purposes. Philocrates escaped me through your guile. I thought he was the slave and you the free, for so you said and interchanged your names between yourselves. Yes, I admit all that. It is just as you have said, and cunningly he has got away by means of my smart work. But I beseech you, are you mad at that? You have the worst torments coming upon you. If not for sin I perish, I don't care. But if I perish and he breaks his word and doesn't come back here, my joy is this. My teeth will be remembered when I did. How I redeemed my lord from slavery and rescued him and saved him from his foes. How I rather chose to risk my own life than to watch him perish in his bonds. The only fame you'll get will be in hell. Nay, he who dies for virtue doesn't perish. When I've expended all my torments on you, and given you up for death with your deceits, people may call it death or perishing just as they like, so long as you are dead. I don't mind that they say you're alive. If you do so, by Pollux, you'll repent. When he comes back here, as I'm sure he will. Oh, heavens, I, I see it now and understand what it all means. My friend Philocrates is free at home and in his native land, and I am glad of that. Nothing could please me more, but I'm grieved that I've gotten him into trouble. <laughs> who stands here bound because of what I said, did I forbid you to speak falsely to me? You did, sir. Then why don't you tell me lies? Because to tell the truth would have done him I served hurt. He profits by my lies. But you will smart for it. That's all right. I don't care. I saved my master, and I'm glad of that. He has been my companion from a boy. His father, my old master, gave me to him. Do you not think this a crime? A very vile one. Well, I say it's right. I don't agree with you. Consider if a slave had done as much for your own son, how grateful you would be. Wouldn't you give that slave his liberty? Wouldn't that slave stand highest in your favor? Answer! Well, yes! Then why be mad with me? Because you are more faithful to your master than heir to me! Oh, what else could you expect? Do you suppose that in one night and day you could so train a man just taken captive, a fresh newcomer, as to serve you better than with he who he has been with since earliest childhood? Then let him pay you for it. Take him off and fit him with the heaviest, thickest chains. Thence to the quarries he must go on, and whilst the rest are hewing eight stones each, you shall each day do half again as much. By God's and men, hey, you, I, I pray you, do not destroy him. I'll take care of him, for in the stocks all night he shall be kept, and quarry stones all day from out the ground. Oh, I'll prolong his torments day by day. Is this your purpose? Death is not so sure. Go! Take him to Hippolytus the smith. Tell him to rivet heavy fetters on him. 
Then cause him to be led out of the city to Cordalis, my freeman at the quarries, and tell him I wish you to be treated with the greatest harshness than the worst slave there. Why should I plead with you in your resolve? The fate of my life will be yours as well. If I should die, my fear of ill will be but short. But if I should live to an extreme old age, my time of suffering will be but short as well. Farewell. But you deserve a different wish. Aristophantes, so as you've done to me, so may you prosper. Since it is through you that this has come upon me! Pick him off! No! Please! The library should come back here! Please give me a chance to see him, I pray! Oh, take it from my sight! No! I'll destroy you! No! Hey! This is your assault and battery! Oh! I'll give my other prisoners an example that none of them may dare repeat his crime. Never again will I put trust in man. Once cheated is enough. Alas, I had hoped that I had saved my son from slavery. My hope has perished. Had it not been for him who laid it bare, the rascals would have led me in a string. One of my sons I lost stolen by a slave when he was four years old, nor have I ever found the slave or Kim. The elder is now a captive. What's my crime? That I beget my children but to lose them? Follow you. I'll return you where you were. Since no one pities me, I'll pity none. Under good auspices, I left my chains. Now I must take up the chains again. my scanty store. Blessings, Lord, being magnificent, thou bestowest more and more. Both thanks and gain, and in sport and jest, festivity and holidays, processions plenty, lots of drink, and heaps of meat, and endless prey. <laughs> Never again I'll play the beggar. Everything I want, I've got. I'm able now to uh, bless my friends and send my enemies to pot. <laughs> With such joyful, joyfulness, this joyful day has loaded me. <laughs> Though it hasn't been bequeathed me, I've come into some property. <laughs> so uh, let me run and find the old man Hegio. What a store of good I bring to him as much as ever he could ask him more. Oh, I am resolved. I'll do just what the slaves do in a comedy. Uh, throw my cloak around my neck that he may hear it first from me. For this good news, I hope to get my own perpetuity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sad the regrets in my heart that are kindled as I think over all that has happened to me. It was such a shameful the way I've been swindled and yet couldn't see. As soon as it's known, how they'll laugh at me in the city. When I come to the market, they'll show me no pity. But mocking say, why are the old man up a tree? But it's this for Gasler's coming. Bless me. He's caught over the shoulder. Why, what can it be? Come, Regasilus! Act and act vigorously! Hereby I denounce and threaten all who shall have struck my way. <clears throat> Any man who dares to do so would have seen his life's last day. I will stand him on his head. For me, he begins to spar. I shall do it. Wherefore, let all passers by stand off afar. Let none dare stand conversing in, in this street till I have passed by. For, for my fists, my catapults, my, my arms, my artillery, and, and, and my shoulder of my ram. Yeah. <laughs> Who meets my knee? Boo! <laughs> to earth he goes. Folk will have to pick their teeth up with, with uh, me that come to blows. <laughs> what do you mean by all this threatening? I confess, I'm puzzled quite. I'll take care they don't forget it. This day, this place, my neck and might. He who stops me in my course will find he stopped his life as well. Let's see what he's after with these threats and menaces I cannot tell. I proclaim it first that, that none may suffer inadvertently. Stay at home, good people all, 
and, 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 and then you won't get hurt by me. Oh, depend on it. It's a dinner that stirred his valorous bile. Woe to the poor wretch whose food has given him this lordly style. First, for those pig breeding millers with their fat and bread fed sows, stinking so that one is hardly able to get past the house. If in any public space I catch those pigs outside their pen, with, with my fists I'll, I'll hammer out the brand from those same filthy men. Here's Pot Valor with a vengeance. He's as full as a man could wish. Oh, then for those fishmongers who offer to the public stinking fish riding to the market on, on a jumping, jolting, juggling car whose foul smell drives to the forum every loafer in the mall. With, with their fish baskets, I'll deal them on their fists to smart clothes just so they can feel the nuisance that they cause the public nose. Listen to his proclamations. What a royal style to keep. Then, for the butchers, who arrange to steal the youngsters from the sheep, undertake to kill a lamb, but send you home right tough of mutton, and they nickname ancient Ram as yearling, sweet enough for any blood. If in any public street or square that Ram comes in my view, I'll make him sorry persons, ancient Ram, and butcher too. Bravo. He makes rules as if he were mayor and corporation. Surely he's been made the master to the market of our nation. <laughs> I have no more parasite, but, but, but kingly and a king of kings. There's such a stock of belly timber from the port of my message brings. Let me hasten heap on Hegel this good news of jollity. Certainly there's no man living who's more happy than he. What's his gladness which he gladly hastes on thee to pour? Where's your hat? Uh, uh, 
There it is. Heaven is my oh, friend! Uh, but I don't market! <laughs> You're not in the market. That's why you don't mark it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Come now, uh, be that uh, pure vessels, be got ready, and, and, and a kid, fast and flourish. But why? To make a sacrifice? To, to whom? To me, of course. I am a Jupiter in human guise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to you, I am salvation, fortune, light, delight, and joy. <clears throat> it's your business to uh, placate my deity with food, dear boy. So. Hunger seems to be your trouble. Well, my hunger isn't yours. As you say, so I can bear it. Life won't have it, that ensures. Jupiter and all the gods confound you! Nothing of the sort. <laughs> Thanks, I merit, for reporting such good tidings from the port. <laughs> now we'll get a meal to suit me. Idiot, you've come too late. <laughs> if I come before I did, your words would come with greater weight. Now, <clears throat> receive the joyful news I bring you. <laughs> I have seen your son, Philopolemus, in harbor safe, and he'll be here anon. He, he, he was on a public vessel, and with him was that, that alien youth and your slave, Stalagnus. He, he who ran away, no, it's not the truth. He who stole your uh, son of four years old, so curse you and cease your mocking. So may oh. holy God a smile on your head, and make me ever worthy of your sacred name. As I saw him, oh my son, your son, my patron, they're the same. Go, uh, prepare the feast at once. Everything is at your disposal. You are my steward for the nonce. <gasps> And if my oracle is a false one, with the cudgel, comb my hide, you shall have bored forever if ah! truly prophesied. Who will pay? I'm silent to I. Do you promise that? I <laughs> do indeed! Then I promise you your son is really come and very deep. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> take the best of everything. Uh, may no delay your path impede. He is gone! And put his kitchen absolutely in my hands. <coughs> How next the trunks will be dissevered at my stern commands? <laughs> what a ban will fall on bacon, and, and what harm on humble ham? Ooh, ooh, ooh! What labor on the lard, and what, and what calamity on lamb? Uh, butchers and pork dealers, you shall find a meal to do today. But, Tell of all who deal in food with a cause too much delay. So, in virtue of my office, I'll lay sentence on the lard. Help those chickens, hung though uncondemned, a fate for them too hard. Oh no! Yeah, you're not allowed to hear me. Slave to my hands again. 
for Philocrates' honor, unsullied it stands. Grieved that I have enough already. I don't want to grow still thinner. And you've told me all your sorrows at the harbor pending dinner. Now to business. Okay. Tell me, Hector, have I kept my promises and restored your son to freedom? Yes, Philocrates, I can never thank you for the services you've done and the way you merit for how you've dealt with me and with my son. Yes, you can, dear father. And the gods will give us both a chance, worthy to recompense the source of my deliverance. And I am sure, my dearest father, it would be a pleasing task. Uh, say no more. I have no tongue to deny you aught you ask. <clears throat> then uh, restore to me the slave whom, as a pledge, I left behind. He has always treated me better than himself with heart and mind, and to reward him for his kindness, now shall be my earnest care. For your goodness, I shall restore him to you. It is only fair. That and all beside you ask for, you shall have. But don't, I pray, be enraged with me, because in, <clears throat> in wrath I punished him today. What have you done? I sent him to the quarries bound in chains when I saw how I'd been cheated. Oh, woe is me. Oh, he bears these pains to a good fellow for my sake because he gave me my release. Ah, and on that note, you shall not pay for him a penny piece. I'll set him free for nothing. <laughs> well, that is kind of you, Hecchio, but send and fetch him quickly, will you? Be it so. Ho, where are you? Run and bid young Jandaris return. Now, go in. For from that slave, that whipping block, I fain would learn what has happened to my younger son, and if he's living still. Meanwhile, you can take a bath. Well, go in, Philocrates. <laughs> Come, bring forth the wretch to me, whose actions severed family ties. Now stand, my worthy sir, my slave, so handsome, good, and wise. What can you expect from me? When a man such as you tells lies, for I never was, nor shall be fine, or handsome, good, or true, you're building on my goodness, it will be the worst for you. Well, it's not hard for you to see where your interest lies. If you tell the truth, it will save you from the harshest penalties. Speak out, straight and true. Although you've not done right and true, I guess. Oh, you needn't think I blush to hear you say what I confess. I will make you blush, you villain, for a bath of blood. Oh, there will be no novelty! You threaten one who is off in there! But no more of this. Just tell me what you ask of me. Perhaps you'll get it. You're too fluent. Kindly speak with brevity. As you please. From a boy he was a supple, flattering knave. But to business. Pray attend me and tell me what I crave. If you speak the truth, you'll find your interest will best subserve. Don't tell me. Do you think I don't know full well what I deserve? But you may escape part, if not the whole, of your desert. Oh, it's little I'll escape. And much will happen to my hurt. For I ran away and stole your son from you, and him I sold. Oh, to whom? To Theodore Menes of the House of Gold for ten pounds. Good heavens, that's the father of Philocrates. Yes, I know that quite as well as you do. Better, if you please. Jupiter in heaven, save me and preserve my darling son. On my soul, Philocrates, come out. I want you. Make haste, run! And you know, I am at your service. This man says he sold my son to your father there in Ellis for ten pounds. And when was this done? Twenty years ago. Oh, nonsense, Hank, he's telling lies. Either you or I am lying. For when you were little boys, he was given you by your father to be trained along with you. Oh, then tell me what his name was, if this tale of yours is true. Hagia. At first, and after time, you called him Tindarus. And how was it that I don't know you? Better off to believe this and forget the names of those from whom they've nothing to expect. So the child that you sold my father, if your story is correct, was bestowed on me as valet. Who was he? My master's son. Is he living, fellow? Who knows? I took the money and then I'm done. What say you? <laughs> that Tindarus is your lost son. Oh, I give you joy. So at least this fellow's statement makes me think. For he's the boy who received his education with myself all through our youth. Well, I'm fortunate and wretched all at once if you speak the truth. 
wretched that I treated him so cruelly if he's my son. Oh, alas, I did both more and less than what I should have done. How I'm vexed that I chastised him, would that I could alter it. I'll see where he comes, and in a fashion does anything but fit. Well, I've often seen in pictures all the torments of the damned, but I'm certain you couldn't find a hell that's as stuffed and crammed with such tortures as those quarries. Now they have a perfect cure for all weariness. They simply drive it off by working more. When I got there, it says, rich fathers often will give their boys starlings, goslings, quails to play with in place of other toys. So when I got there, a crow, crowbar, was given me as plaything pretty. Oh, oh, my lord is at the door, and my old lord from Ellis City has returned. Hail, my long lost son. Whoa. Yeah. What means this talk of signs? Oh, yes, I see why you pretend to be my father. Yes, for you think you've acted like a parent, for you brought me to the light. Yeah. <laughs> hail, oh, 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 hail. For you, I mean this pretty plight. But. Now you shall be free and wealthy, for you must be told, hey, here's your father. That slave stole you when I was four years old and sold you to my father for ten pounds, who gave you me when we were little fellows at my ballet you might be. That slave whom we bought from Ellis has certain proof supplied. Wait, wait, wait. Am I his son? Yes. <laughs> and your brother, too, you'll find inside. Then you brought back his son who was a prisoner. Yes, and he is in the house. Well, you've done right well and nobly, sir. And now you have a father. And that's a slave who stole you when a boy. Oh, well, now that I'm grown up, he'll find that theft will bring him little joy. Oh, he deserves your vengeance. Oh, I'll have him paid for what he's done. But tell me, are you my father, really? Yes, I am, my son. You know, it's strange. Yes, I seem, I seem when I reflect, yes, I, I seem to recollect as if Looking through a mist, my father's name was Hagio. I am he! Oh! oh. And then oh. break the oh. fetters oh. off your son and let him go and attach him to that villain. Oh. Certainly it shall be so. Let's go in and let the smith be called to knock off all your chains and put them on that fellow. No! Oh, Bird, for they're my only gates! Ah! Oh. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, oh. this play has been written on the lines of modesty. Here are found no wiles of women, no gay lovers' gallantry. Here are no affiliations and no tricks for getting gold. No young lover buys his mistress while his father is cajoled. It's not often nowadays that plays are written of this kind, where good folk are made better. Now, if it be your mind, and we pleased you and not bored you, kindly undertake our cause, and to modesty award the prize, the highest applause. <laughs> 